so uh, we at Dorisoft are participating in the development of uh, an open banking API uh, and are doing uh, the stable coin that is uh, used inside of it. Uh, Uh, okay, so um, uh, PSD2 Directive and Open Banking API uh, will allow uh, to uh, the banks, uh, to the users, uh, and to the uh, third-party fintech applications developers to use uh, uh, one integrated environment. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the features that is very interesting to the users is that they will be able to select from uh, third-party applications and still use their favorite bank, but instead of uh, using their, uh, this bank's software, uh, they will uh, switch to other uh, third-party uh, financial application providers uh, that will use this banking uh, API. And there are uh, many other uh, features of uh, both uh, um, directives uh, that, uh, that bring the value. Uh, so, uh, inside of this uh, open banking uh, platform, there is a stable coin uh, that is backed by Fiat. Uh, it's called Token X. Uh, there are uh, some other stable coins uh, today, uh, those that are backed by crypto. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, those that are backed by crypto, uh, they are uh, still uh, um, quite volatile, even they. Oh, sorry. Uh, even uh, they, uh, those that are backed by a portfolio of uh, cryptocurrencies. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, those that are backed uh, um, by fiat, like uh, Token X, and also uh, algorithmic uh, coins, uh, entirely algorithmic coins like Day, that are really great but still need a lot of time uh, for adoption. Uh, so the one that we participate in is backed by fiat. Uh, in an open banking platform, blockchain gives uh, a decentralized uh, environment uh, that uh, all of the users uh, can benefit of. Uh, it gives uh, more trust, uh, security, uh, and uh, all the value of, uh, of the blockchain. Uh, yeah, uh, the um, project is developed by the team in San Francisco and uh, us as an extension of their team. And uh, the product will be de uh, deployed in uh, European Union, uh, where the PSD2 directive is, uh, uh, is adopted. So uh, the project is using two uh, blockchains, uh, Stellar as uh, one of the uh, most uh, banking friendly. Uh, it has everything uh, for the banks to uh, quickly enter the, uh, the, the platform and uh, attach their liquidity uh, through the technologies that are available in Stellar. Also, uh, multiple uh, currencies exchange is very efficient in Stellar. And also, um, another way uh, how this uh, fiat asset is tokenized uh, is based on the Ethereum platform that uh, gives all the power of um, uh, smart money and uh, programmable financial uh, interactions to the platform. Uh, so a bit of uh, implementations of course uh, inside of uh, the solution there are um, many smart contracts but uh, I would like to uh, speak only about those who are maybe the most important. Uh, the gradability uh, quite uh, often uh, mm, misunderstanding about smart contracts is that uh, uh, they are uh, immutable and this is uh, a limitation for uh, for an application but uh, yeah of course a smart contract is something that cannot be uh, changed it can be just redeployed but the architecture uh, with uh, the proxy the logic and the storage smart contract that uh, uh, we implemented into this product uh, gives an ability to update just the logic smart contracts uh, without uh, mm, changing the um, API part of the solution that is proxy uh, smart contract also uh, the uh, redeployment of a logic uh, contract doesn't uh, require um, to extract all the data that was previously used by this contract uh, because the data of uh, all the system is stored in a separate storage smart contract uh, that is uh, basically just a uh, hash value uh, table and all other smart contracts just uh, uh, go inside of it to write and read uh, all the values. 
uh, and this allows to uh, easily update the logic smart contract uh, layer later uh, if something change, uh, changes in the implementation of the solution. Uh, also, another interesting uh, thing that uh, appeared recently in the latest uh, uh, versions of Solidity is uh, the, the call and static call uh, functions that allow to even uh, uh, call those uh, methods of the interface that were not uh, entirely available in the initial uh, deployment. Uh, so uh, even uh, if our um, proxy level uh, doesn't have uh, um, a signature of, uh, of a method uh, that we need later, or maybe a signature of uh, uh, any uh, method that was uh, previously deployed changed, we still ha uh, cannot, uh, uh, we, we can call such a method without redeploying the proxy because um, uh, the uh, way how uh, such a new method uh, of uh, uh, the logic level can be called uh, is uh, uh, we just encode uh, the name and uh, all the parameters of the uh, of this method on the application uh, level, not uh, not on blockchain, uh, but uh, as it uh, is in this example using JavaScript, and we can execute such a new method uh, without any redeployment. Uh, another thing that we faced in this product, initially when we joined to the, uh, the project, there were a lot of uh, um, gas overuse. Uh, even uh, the developers are really great, by, uh, but um, I guess those who joined the blockchain uh, industry before developing um, using other um, off-chain technologies, uh, they don't realize that uh, a lot of uh, operations uh, consume too many gas and should be optimized. So I just summarized uh, some of the uh, most uh, gas-consuming things that can be improved uh, in, uh, in any smart contract. And uh, uh, yeah, of course, one of the most uh, consuming is uh, reading, writing, storage data. Uh, so uh, we need to avoid uh, calling uh, for example, in our case, it is the storage contract. Uh, we need to avoid calling um, for the same data multiple times. And um, mm, it's quite easy to, to make such an, uh, an error, because um, if we have multi-level architecture, uh, we, um, it looks more efficient initially in the code to uh, read the same uh, data from the storage contract from one level and uh, later maybe uh, or in another uh, function to call again uh, the same uh, value so uh, but this consumes uh, this uh, consumes gas and uh, instead of doing this uh, it's better to read it once and pass it through the parameters for example of the of a function it doesn't look really good but it uh, uh, improves uh, the the, uh, the use of gas uh, also, uh, it's good to uh, pack uh, those uh, uh, values that are used together. Uh, for example, we had a case uh, of calculation of fees uh, that uh, was using uh, several uh, parameters, and all those parameters uh, should be uh, packed in a structure and read or uh, uh, written once uh, in, in the storage. Uh, this uh, really helped us to improve uh, on gas uh, significantly. Uh, also, calling one uh, contract uh, from another. Um, uh, stored, uh, in this case, uh, um, allowed to, to be called uh, this method from outside and inside. But if we uh, make such uh, a method external, so it can be called only from outside, of uh, uh, the contract, uh, this also improves on gas. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And another thing that uh, we are implementing in this uh, project is uh, atomic swaps between uh, uh, Ethereum uh, and uh, Stellar, uh, because if uh, end users uh, will have their tokenized fiat asset uh, uh, on both platforms, uh, at some point they will need to exchange between them uh, this, uh, this asset uh, and uh, adding atomic swaps uh, will uh, improve um, trust and security, so they don't need to uh, go through a centralized uh, exchange to do this. 
And uh, unfortunately, both platforms uh, have uh, everything for this. Uh, we have, uh, of course, we can implement anything in Ethereum, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, including a multi-signature wallet contract. Uh, in Stellar, uh, there is the multi-signer account that can be set up. Uh, also, uh, the time lock uh, that we need uh, uh, for such uh, an escrow wallet is available on both platforms because uh, we have a time step at Ethereum and uh, uh, time bound uh, transactions uh, attribute in Stellar. And uh, to do uh, an atomic swap, we need uh, the same hash uh, uh, algorithm uh, that uh, is used uh, to, um, to reveal. Uh, they're uh, the same uh, shared secret uh, when uh, the first uh, party uh, makes the transfer. Uh, this reveals uh, this uh, uh, pre-image uh, of a hash that can be used by the other party to withdraw their, uh, their money also. And uh, both platforms uh, have uh, this, uh, uh, this ability. Uh, Ethereum has uh, the SHA uh, 256 uh, algorithm and Stellar has uh, it in a way of uh, a bit uh, exotic thing. Uh, uh, they call this um, a special type of uh, uh, signer, uh, hash x signer, that uh, uh, allow us um, to, uh, to use uh, a pre-image of a hash to unlock uh, a transaction uh, and uh, unlock the amount uh, uh, that is stored on an escrow wallet. Yeah, uh, this is what we've done uh, for, for this product. Um, uh, the stablecoin is called Token X. It's already available uh, on the uh, internal Stellar exchange. Uh, they have an exchange, uh, um, the Stellar platform. And this Token X uh, um, solution uh, now um, is backed uh, by uh, USD and Euro. Uh, it's uh, on a pre-release stage. We hope that it will be deployed in Europe and uh, yeah, will uh, will it help to adopt blockchain uh, in banking industry. Yeah. Thank you.